All right, well, welcome back to another episode of Two Dudes and a Train, episode four. Last time, uh, last episode, when we wrapped up, Ed and I, we had a one hell of a brainstorm, and we just couldn't stop. So we just kept the, the film rolling, and uh, we're going to give you a little bit of a recap of uh, those individual sections that we come up with. Okay, and we're back. Hope you guys enjoyed it of what we come up with. You know, Ed and I, we come up with a, with a lot of ideas, a lot of modifications to the track, a lot of tweaking here and there. And uh, so now what we'll do is we'll go a little bit into uh, a little bit of discussions about what we're going to do with each section. And um, Ed, Ed's going to talk about that because he's going to show me and teach me a few things, you know, that um, I, I'm just not aware of yet. You know, and little tricks of the trade here and there. So, uh, take it away, Ed. All right. Well, basically, let's start over here. This is what is going to be the logging area. And when we had the layout, the printout of the layout all set, set down here, we realized, or at least I realized, that the, having the track loop around right here was a little bit tight. It kind of crunched everything together, and, and uh, we came up with a way to do two things. Number one, we ex extended the scene a little bit to give more room here for modeling in the logging area. And two, we decided we're going to make a really nice uh, scene over here, kind of a scene off on its own. So if we come around here, yeah, I'm kind of excited about this one. The idea is going to be that if you face, face the layout from this side, we'll have the fascia here and we'll have a cutout so you will be able to see the inside of this tunnel. The tunnel is going to come through and we're going to actually model the entire interior to be, to be a uh, timber lined tunnel. Uh, we think it's going to be a pretty cool idea and uh, yeah so that's going to give us a little more room, uh, stretch the scene out, be able to hide a little bit of the train and give you a really nice uh, focal point here on this side of the layout. Yes. So that's this side. We did do a, just a kind of a general overall idea of what we want to do for the town. Now this is a whole nother uh, segment. We really won't be touching this too much more. We just wanted to have a, a, a basic idea of how we're going to lay out the roads and things like that. But we'll talk about this more in depth in uh, when we come time to really build this area of the scenery. Yeah, this is this is going to be the most detailed of the of the whole layout. So, yeah, we got to do this correct. So now, so coming over here, what you see here is just a basic uh, kind of a quick representation of some mountains. We're going to have mountains coming off it to help hide that corner there, and it's going to also come down here, and that's going to create a little bit of a scenic divide between the town area and this area right here which will be the sawmill area. So, along with the sawmill, Roland, I think you wanted to show, oh, uh, yeah. show what you're doing here. Got this at a nice uh, expo center uh, last year. Paid a real good price for it. I, I don't know, but it's German. It's German. So, um, this is actually going to be our sawmill that is going to be going into the area here. Now, I'm not going to show you too much of this. All right, this is going to be another episode because I want to show you guys how I build this and what's involved in this. So we're just going to set this off to the side. But what we needed out of there was the base, the actual footprint of the sawmill itself. So, um, Ed, explain what we're going to do with All it. Right. So, with the sawmill being a water wheel powered sawmill, you can see it right here. There's a water wheel here. We have to have a river next to it and a water supply that's going to come through. And that's what's going to power the, the wheel and power the, the actual saw mechanism inside. So, that gets into our, our little problem of just establishing where the river is going to come through in this area. So we were talking about how we lay it out. And let's, that's, uh, that's where we're going to go from here. Yeah, this so. is kind of like the, mo the most 
focal point of the whole logging area here is of course the sawmill. You know, can't feed a sawmill without water. Yeah, Ed and I, we've, uh, we was collaborating hard on this. So I think we've come up with a good plan now. Right. So if we're, the idea is we're going to have the mountains over here and we want the, the river or stream to kind of flow around, kind of match the topography of the mountains. And then it's going to disappear around the back and into the, into, into the behind the mountain area there. So we've kind of come up with an idea, and what we're going to do is I'm going to draw out. Oh, uh, you need a you need a chair, Ed, or no, a little step stool. I, think I can reach it. I oh, think okay. I can reach it. I want to say that the river should come in about like this. This area here will be the feed for the for the water wheel. Okay. Okay. We can do something with a, like a, a sluice gate or something. We'll bring the river around. Okay. And feed back in. Now we need to have a return into the river here and uh, out this way. We're going to avoid this turnout right here. Okay. And we don't want to go too crazy wide. It's not the real grand. Maybe we'll some, something like this. Put a couple bridges in here. What do you think of this layout so far? I'm actually liking this. A nice horseshoe shaped deal. And then in the back here, what, what we can do is my idea is instead of having to paint a, a water which I'm sure you could do but it's very difficult when you're dealing with perspectives of a flat surface meeting a vertical surface I totally agree so, so uh, oh, go ahead yeah so I think the easiest way to solve it is just to have the river just kind of disappear behind the hill now now obviously we're going to be putting mountains back there mm -hmm. so what would you suggest maybe like trees Maybe for sure some trees, some hills, and you know the, the mountain's going to be coming off of here. And instead of just having the mountain drop into a flat scene, we should we should have some representation, oh, some rolling hills. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. All righty, all righty. I'm seeing the vision here, the imagination. So I like this location for the sawmill. What do you think? You know what? I think that's a good idea. Just for one of the main reasons is that you know it cuts out most of the bridges. It looks like so still I'm going to have to need four bridges though. But the way I was looking at it at first is I was just going to come straight through here and have a straight, a straight river. But as you can see, I was going to be running into way too many bridges, which the cost goes up and what have you. But well, no, but I like, I like that. It. But if you think about here, if these are if these are the loading and unloading tracks, you wouldn't really have a river and a bridge in a Exactly. You're you're wasting uh, valuable valuable uh, space there. Exactly. I like well, so. Yeah, we'll I'm really I'm around. really loving this idea. You know, and it almost kind of looks like a river you would find out in the in, in the world, you know. Nothing straight, or nice and curvy. You got mountains right here that would help feed it, you know. Nice little area. Now, I got a question, Ed. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. What's your question? What when we carve this out, what what would we put underneath it? How would how would we carve this out to make it a nice topography? Well, what we're gonna do with this being the foam, we're just gonna take a knife and we're gonna Cut it out. We'll slant the sides a little bit, okay, so that we can do our, now, e our slopes. And then, but, it, but it's it's open underneath. It is there. open, but we'll we'll resolve that with just a, a piece of underlayment that we'll oh. we'll use this as our pattern. How about this? Maybe just go underneath and take some some uh, you know a, a piece of foam and just put it right underneath. We could do that, but we really want to go with a piece of uh, something good hardboard and be able to seal it. Ah, all ah. right. So, okay. when it comes time to actually model this river, we're going to use a, a, a water-like substance. Gotcha. All right, and model the actual water. Oh. Which is going to be fun. Oh, that's really going to be interesting. Yeah, I've, never, I've never done anything like that. The, the catch is, you have to make sure it is sealed so that the modeled water stays in the modeled river. Right. And not right. all over your garage floor. Yeah, because that's, that's like a, that's almost like an epoxy, isn't it? It sure is. Okay, okay. It's an epoxy resin, yeah. two-part resin. Okay. We'll mix it together. And of course, we'll de detail out the riverbed first. We'll have some nice pebbles in there and, and everything. Nice. And then now that will dry, when it sets up, that will actually be very, very smooth. Nice. Then what we do is we come around with some water effects. Okay. okay. Uh, we, there's a there's a multitude of different products which we we'll all go through and look at when the time comes to model the river. But uh, yeah, the end result will have ripples and 
little, some slight rapids in there. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm yeah, but, uh, it. My, my vision is it's looking pretty good. So hopefully yeah. we can pull it off. I'm liking this, and it's actually a little bit less uh, cost cost effective mm -hmm. by by curving it like that. And, and a little more realistic. Now, obviously, yeah. with the model railroad, everything has to be compressed, yeah. and everything is really too squished together to be re exactly realistic. But that's one of the compromises you make when you're doing model railroading. And so it, and, this is, and, and I guess that's why you have dividers like this. Absolutely, a nice so, scenic device. Yeah, a nice scenic device. See, that make that makes sense on a, on a rather small scale, mm -hmm. you know, like like we're doing here. So, but um, alrighty then. Well, I'm seeing it. I'm liking it, and um, I think the next step on is to um, start laying out the actual, I guess, the land. I'll start laying yep, out start figuring that out. What I like about having the sawmill oriented this way is the front, which is going to be your most detailed side yep. with the water wheel and everything, is facing out. That's going to be you know the main thing that you see when you're standing here enjoying your layout. Yep, and it and it will be seen from all four sides. No matter how you look at it, you're gonna no matter where you stand at these three spots, you're going to be able to see all four sides. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's going to be the main focal point of this whole layout. And obviously, you know. This area over here, you know, which is going to get quite detailed. I want a lot of automation, you know, a falling tree or two, you know. So, yeah, it's going to be going to be a lot involved. All right. Lot so we're good with the river. I'm going to you lock know it what? in. Go ahead and lock it in, Kevin. We're locking it in. All right. Here is where the river is going to be. All righty. Oh, oh, oh. Let me hold that. Oh, we got it. First building installed. There it is. How about that? Uh, well, at least located. So shall it be. <laughs> and then at this point here where it dips into the river, you know, maybe like uh, take like a wood wooden planks. As a, as a diverter wall? Yep, a sluice gate. A sluice gate. That's right. A, a, a sluice gate? Or sluice. Sluice gate. Sluice, right. And, and sluice. So they'll be able, when, when they, when if, you know, if the water ri level rises, they'll be able to control the flow. Ah, the so, line, so yeah. we're going to have to make like a little, little hinge there, you know, with a little door right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm digging it. Okay, okay. Yeah, that can be a really interesting detail part with a, yeah. with a stand and a, and a wheel. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you got a little bit flooring rapids going down, you know. Okay. Yeah, then we have our... Yeah. Yeah, okay, right there. Then now, now, would there be some sort of a... No. Of a diverter wall no. over here? No. no. It just flows right just on. Just right on. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Saw mill. Yeah, and then when we're ready to build this, then um, I'll I'll uh, put that on air and show everybody how this saw mill is going to be built. Which is going to be interesting because I haven't built a model since I was a child. Mm -hmm. I always build stuff like this, but a plastic model, I haven't built in a long time. I hope I still have my, my technique in. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, I guess that wraps it up for another episode. Episode number four. Episode number four, but we're rolling right along. And once again, thank you. Thank you for looking or for watching our videos and subscribing <laughs> and actually tuning in. And uh, if you have any comments or anything, please comment down below please subscribe hit that button you know and um, yeah let's try and keep this going uh, in the next episode oh we're gonna be painting the clouds painting which will be the first step in getting our backdrops finalized we'll get the clouds painted in and now that we have an idea of how our track is all laid out and and kind of a rough idea of where our town is going to be we can actually start Figuring in where to put hills and mountains in the actual painted part of the backdrop. Episode 5. Episode 5. Alrighty, so until next time, thank you for tuning in. This is Ed. I'm Roland for Two Dudes in a Train, and catch you later. <laughs>